Howdy. Welcome back to the channel. Okay, guys, today this video um, is is based towards uh, professing Christians. The topic of this video today is Christians need to unify. Um, Christians have become so disunified over all the years uh, that we're basically have broke ourselves into uh, hundreds of different types of Christians when in reality there's only one. I think that what's disunifying Christians a lot is no one's willing to talk. Everybody has to, if you don't agree with everything that I agree with, we can't be friends or uh, you're a legalist or uh, you're just using your freedom as license to sin or different things like that that Christians toss around a lot without really understanding what it means. Really what, what brought this topic up, and I've seen a lot of disunity in the church just by, from personal experience, but something that really just made me want to make this video was a comment because me and my dad check my sister's comments uh, before we let them go through just so that way when she writes back she has no inappropriate comments or anything like that. Uh, <clears throat> well, one thing that I saw is there was this man that commented uh, and was being nice about it. He wasn't being rude or being arrogant or anything like that. He was just explaining why he believed that uh, the Sabbath should be on a Saturday and not on a Sunday. Uh, a supposed brother wrote underneath that comment and instead of, you know, talking about it, instead of, you know, explaining to him his side, uh, he did something that a lot of Christians do nowadays and it's and it doesn't help. Uh, he said, grow up, you Pharisee. First of all, that's not helping anything. That's not building up your brother in Christ. That's not um, sharpening him. That's discouraging him. That's destructing words. Um, and it's not helping any kind of situation whatsoever. You know, whether he's right or whether he's wrong on whether the Sabbath should be on Saturday or Sunday, that's something that could be open and, and discussed about instead of just throw him aside, call him a Pharisee, and then go along. Um, this is something that needs to be discussed. If you think that he's wrong, talk about it in a loving manner, but just to toss his comment aside and say, you're a Pharisee, grow up, that's not, that's not helpful at all. Um, so that's just one of the examples, and I have many, many other personal examples um, of Christians being disunified and uh, no one's caring for one another anymore. The brothers aren't caring for the brothers. Uh, the younger sisters in Christ aren't learning from the older sisters in Christ. Uh, we're not gathering together um, like we should. A personal example of disunity is we've been to so many churches where um, if you go if you're going to that church and then a friend says, hey, why don't you come and visit my church one week and we can fellowship. So you go to their church and you come back, they look at you like you just cheated on your church. Aren't we all the church? Aren't we just one church? We're not hundreds and hundreds and thousands of churches. We're one church. So it doesn't matter if I go to this church and then another week I go to this church. It's not wrong. We're all still the body of Christ. So I think one of the biggest issues is name calling, especially if you don't know what the words mean. One that I've heard tossed around a lot is legalist. You're a legalist because I, you're saying that I can't do this, um, but I believe I can. Um, this again is a communication error. Instead of talking about it, saying, okay, why do you see this point out in scripture where you see you know, that I can't do this, instead of just saying you're a legalist, you need to you know, basically change your, change your views to what I believe. Um, Again, that's not helping anybody. That's discouraging the church, that's separating the church. Um, and I'm gonna read a scripture to you that fits this perfect. So this fits, this fits perfect. This is uh, Romans 14, uh, one and so on until I get done with the passage. Um, but anyway, this, this fits this scenario perfect. I want you to listen carefully. As for the one who is weak in faith, welcome him, but not to quarrel over opinions one person believes he may eat anything, while the weak person eats only vegetables. 
Let not the one who eats despise the one who abstains. Or let not the one who abstains pass judgment on the one who eats. For God has welcomed him. And it goes on to another um, example of the day. So it's perfect for uh, the Sabbath issue that I was just talking about earlier. I'll just read the, the first couple of verses. One person esteems one day as better than another, while another esteems all days alike. Each one should be fully convinced in his own mind. The one who observes the day observes it in honor, of, in honor of the Lord. The one who eats, eats in honor of the Lord, since he gives thanks to God, while the one who abstains, abstains in the honor of the Lord and gives thanks to God. So just right there, it's saying if, if I decide that I don't want to eat, I only want to eat vegetables because I think that meats are bad, and I tell you, you know, I believe that I, that I shouldn't eat meats, you don't go grow up your Pharisee or you're just a legalist. First of all, I want to define the word legalist first because a lot of Christians throw it around and they don't know what it means. A legalist is someone who says, okay, I want to be saved. How do I be saved? Okay, well, you need to repent and put your trust in Jesus, which is true, and then, but they add stuff to it. And then you have to attend church every week. You have to uh, dance in a circle every Wednesday. Um, and then play the piano on Fridays. That's a very weird analogy, but it's the same thing. That's a legalist saying that it's not just through Christ that you're saved, it's through your works, it's through things that you have to do, um, which is not the truth at all. Um, so that's what an illegalist is. So going back to the biblical example, if, if I decide that I only want to eat vegetables, I'm doing it for the Lord's, I'm doing it to the glory of the Lord. I'm doing it because I, I'm not fully convinced in my mind that I can eat meat. Um, but I'm abstaining for, for God's glory. I'm saying, okay, God, I'm not fully convinced. I don't know if, I, if, I, if I'm allowed to. So I'm just going to abstain for your glory. Well, the other person says, I can eat everything because the Lord made it all clean. I'm fully convinced in my mind that I can. For somebody coming to me and say I'm legalist because I only eat vegetables and say that I can only eat vegetables, or me going to you and say, I can't believe that you're eating meats and stuff like that. That's, that's wrong. That's not for you to that's not for you to decide instead you can talk about it sharpen one another you pull out scripture he pulls out scripture and and you find that and you find out the truth together but instead uh we as christians just go you're a legalist uh or you're just using your freedom uh, you're, you're just saying that you have so much freedom and you're not uh, paying any attention to the rules or anything like that so that that's i think one of the biggest and strongest uh scriptural verses for that um so if somebody says, I want to live holy, I don't want to watch certain movies, I don't want to listen to certain songs, which is a completely different topic. I might make a video on that um, soon, but stop calling people legalists for wanting to do that. There's nothing wrong with that. If somebody's convinced, like my sister and my mom, they're convinced that they you know, need to wear skirts, not that they're pushing that on anybody else, and not that they feel like they have to or they're not saved, it's just what they want to do. And so, you know, you can't come to them and say you're a legalist. They're not pushing it on you. They're just saying this is what I'm convinced of. This is what I want to do for God's glory. Um, if you want to wear pants, go for it. You know, as long as it's not immodest, go for it. So I think that also another issue is denominations. People always ask, what denomination are you? What denomination are you? What does it matter? You know, we don't, we don't, me and my family are convinced that we're not a, any kind of denomination. We're not Baptist. We're not... Uh, uh, you know, anything like that. We're, we are Christians, and that's what everybody should be, is Christians. Everybody can have, you know, we're all brothers and sisters in Christ. It's like, you, in, in the fleshly sense, I don't have everything, I don't have the same desires, the same convictions as my, as my blood brothers and sisters, um, or brother and sister. So it's, it's the same with the Christian walk. We can all have different opinions that don't, aren't, and I want to tread this carefully because I don't want people to think that you can go do whatever you want because I feel like I, I can do that. No, there are boundaries. God did put the Ten Commandments uh, and how you're supposed to live and stuff like that, but I mean stuff that is not um, scriptural based. Uh, like going back to the skirts example, God does not say you have to wear skirts. Um, but it's just something that they want to do in honor of the Lord. Um, and that's okay. Um, but again, just to reiterate, God does have boundaries you know you're not supposed to lie steal I can't be like well I believe I can lie and stuff like that and I'm okay you know then obviously you are in sin and that's not right um, but on things that aren't 
necessarily sins um, or things that aren't things that aren't sins just personal convictions personal things like that um, it's okay to be different it's okay to have different convictions so so with the, with the denomination thing it's it's killing us because it's separating us um, from being one true church from being one body in Christ and said the arms over there the legs over there uh, uh, you know the hand is over there the eyes over there you know that it's well, no we need to be one body and I think that the biggest thing for me is Christ wants us to be unified and I'm about to pull out multiple scriptures I don't want to just point out one verse like some you know there are people who will just pull out one scripture and say see that's what I'm talking about um, no, I'm going to give you multiple verses of Christ wanting us to be unified, um, wanting us to care and love for one another instead of pull each other down because we don't have the same beliefs. I want to let you know that these verses are not verses that I looked up on the internet. Um, I actually pulled out the scriptures and the Lord showed me a bunch of verses on it. Um, and so I want to share those with y'all. Okay, so this is John uh, 17, 22 through 23. This is Christ speaking. This is the high priestly prayer. Um, Christian, most Christians should know this. Um, so this is the high priestly prayer. Um, and it says, uh, The glory that you have given to me, I have given to them, that they may be one even as we are one. I am in him and you in me, that they may be pr become perfectly one, uh, so that the world may know that you sent me and loved them even as you have loved me. He's saying that we need to all be one as the Father is one. You know, Christ, the, the Son and the Father are not separated you know they're one they're perfectly one and he wants us to be perfectly one so here's another example this is earlier um, in the high priestly prayer um, this is verse 11 it says and I am no longer in the world but they are in the world and I am coming to you Holy Father keep them in your name which you have given me that they may be one even as we are one okay so this is Going a little bit further, this is Acts. This is when the first, when the church first began. This is Acts uh, 2, 44 through 47. Um, and it says, And all who believed were together and had all things in common. And they were selling their possessions and belonging and distributing the proceeds to all as at any had need. And day by day, attending the temple together, breaking bread in their homes, they received their food with generous hearts, praising God and having favor with all people. And the Lord added to their number day by day those who were being saved. So this is, again, this is a whole other separate issue, um, but the church, you know, uh, like I was talking about earlier, how some churches think, no, you can't go to that church because you'd be cheating on this church and, you know, we want you here. Um, we're all one church. We all need to be together breaking bread in each other's homes. It doesn't matter which church you come from. Um, it doesn't matter if I go to First Baptist here or, uh, you know, the Reformed Church there or whatever. Um, we're still one body and we can still break bread together. All right, so this is 1 Corinthians 12. Okay, so this is 1 Corinthians 12, 21 through 26. The eye cannot say to the hand, I have no need of you. Nor again the head to the feet, I have no need of you. On the contrary, the parts of the body that seem to be weaker are indispensable. And on those parts, parts of the body that we think that are less honorable, we bestow with greater honor. And our unpresentable parts are treated with greater modesty, which our more presentable parts do not require. But God has so composed the body, giving great honor to the part that lacked it, that there, be, there, that there may be no division in the body, but that the members may have the same care for one another. If one member suffers, all suffer together. If one member is honored, all rejoice together. Now you are the body of Christ and individually members of it. That's a perfect example right there. I can't say to, you know, uh, this guy over here, I, Christ has no need of you. you. You, We don't need you. The, we're different parts of the body. We're not, you know, not everybody's an ear. Not everybody's a mouth. Not everybody is an arm. Not everybody's a finger. Not everybody, so not everybody's gonna be the same, but we're all one body, nevertheless. Okay guys, this is gonna be the last one I'm gonna read. Um, there's plenty more in here, I know, but I wanna make sure the video is not too long. Um, but this is, the, this is chapter four of Ephesians. Uh, the caption is literally unity in the body of Christ. But this is uh, 
uh, chapter 4, 1 through 16. Now, this is a longer read, but bear with me. It's important. I therefore, a prisoner of the Lord, urge you to walk in a manner worthy of calling to which you have been called, with all humility and gentleness, with patience, bearing with one another in love. So again, you can't just go to somebody and say, grow up, you Pharisee. That's not bearing with one another with patience and love. So, bearing with one another in love, eager to maintain the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. There is one body and one Spirit, just as you were called to one hope that belongs to your call. One Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all who is over all and through all and all. But grace was given to each of us according to the measure of Christ's gift. Therefore it says, when he ascended on high, he led a host of captives and he gave gifts to men. Uh, in saying he ascended that, uh, what, does, what does it mean, but that he had also had to descend into the lower regions of the earth. He who descended is the one who also ascended far above all the heavens that he might, be, that he might fulfill all things. And he gave the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, the shepherds, the teachers, to equip the saints for works of ministry, for building up the body of Christ. Until we all attain to the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God to mature manhood, uh, to, measure, to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ, so that we may no longer be children, tossed to and fro by the waves and carried about by every wind of doctrine, by human cunning, by craftiness and deceitful schemes. Rather, speaking in the truth in love, we are to grow up in every way into him who is the head into Christ, for whom the whole body, joined and held together by every joint with which is equipped, when each part is working properly, makes the body grow so that it builds itself up in love. That's the last scripture there. I mean, this is multiple verses that I've pointed to you guys that we can't just throw other Christians down um, and throw out their ideas, throw out their convictions just because you don't have the same conviction. Um, the Lord may use you to show them that eating meat's not bad. Um, then again, it may not, but either way, we're supposed to be bearing with one another in patience and in love. Um, and every, every body member is together. We're not all ears. We're not all eyes. Everybody is different, but when we're all joined together and we're all working properly, the body grows. But right now, guys, the, the, the church is just unified, and it's almost embarrassing. Um, because when the outside world looks in on the church, they're like, okay, well, there's hundreds of different denominations. They don't believe what they believe. They don't know what they're talking about. So, I mean, th this, can't be, this can't be right, because Christ is true. Why are they so disunified? Why are they so against one another? Why are they so uh, fighting amongst each other? We need to unify. If we do not unify, things are going to get worse. Things are People aren't going to want to come to Christ as they should. Christ is not being... Um, we're not being good ambassadors of Christ when we are sitting here fighting amongst each other, um, tearing one another down, um, calling each other legalists, hypocrites, Unless, unless the brother or sister is in sin, um, you have no right to call each other legalists. If I was to come to you and say, no, you can't, you can't eat meat, you're not allowed to. Okay, well, you know, that's what you believe in that sense because it's not sinful. It's not sinful to eat meat. Um, it's not sinful not to eat meat. Um, okay, so that, instead of, you know, grow up, you Pharisee, or um, you're a legalist, or whatever like that, okay, well, let's talk about this and let's sharpen each other. And maybe you'll change the other person's mind. Maybe you won't, but either way, instead of separating and being enemies, um, you grow that bond closer, I think. But please unify, guys. Um, this is super important. Satan does not want us to unify. We are a powerful force through Christ. We are a powerful force, and he knows that if we, are, if we unify. He's, Satan has worked a lot, um, and he has crafted such a way that he has disunified the body of Christ. So we have a small little part here, small little part here, small little part, and they all don't like each other. Um, and that's good. We don't want that, uh, is, what the, is what the evil side is wanting, is wanting to happen. They don't want the Christians to unify, because if they do, their plans are pretty much foiled. Uh, not through because we're some great people, but because... 
Christ and the Spirit in us. So please guys, love one another, be patient with one another, care for one another, sharpen each other, um, encourage one another, eat with one another, and strive to live holy lives. Um, this, is a very, this is very important and something that's been put on my heart. And uh, I hope you guys really see the need to unify because um, it's very, very important. It's what Christ wanted. Um, this is what we're going through right now is not what Christ wanted. He did not want us to be disunified like we are. He wanted us to be one body as Christ. He wanted us to be one as Christ and the Father are one. So thank you guys for watching this video. I hope this made sense. Um, I hope you guys really think about it um, and really put it into practice. And don't forget to hit that thumbs up button and to leave a comment below. And uh, please, if you haven't yet, hit the subscribe button. It helps me out a lot. I'll catch you guys in the next video.